I have now had this car aligned more than 10 times. It's really shocking to me that small changes in how the wheels are pointing can have such a profound impact on how a car drives. And I'm not talking just about making the car drive straight. I'm talking about indifferences in how it handles and how it feels. So I'm gonna make a video that I wish had been made when I was getting into cars, which is what does every alignment setting do and how does it change the way the car feels? I'm not trying to set up cars to actually go fast. Most people that get this into alignments, they're doing track days or maybe they're drifting and they're really getting into extracting performance out of cars. I got into this to extract feel out of cars. So just understand my viewpoint going into this stuff. Some of my recommendations will actually make the performance worse, but they'll give you more communication, more feedback which is what I personally am looking for. So first of all, I'm just gonna go through what is alignment and what are all these different settings. Under every car, there are some bolts that are adjustable, which can move how your wheel is positioned when it's neutral. Each of these is just a measurement in different dimensions. What is caster? This is the most interesting one because I feel like everybody's heard the phrase camber and toe. The easiest way to imagine this is the caster is the angle of your suspension coming into your wheel. But there's another way to think about this. You can also think about it as how far the wheel is inside the wheel well. I'm gonna get on to how caster affects the drive because it affects it significantly. Camber is how far the wheel is leaning in this way. That would be negative camber or out this way. It's positive camber, nobody does it, it's bad. And toe is how far in or out the wheels are pointing when you're going straight. If you have both wheels pointed in, it's toe in. If you have both wheels pointed out, it's toe out. Now the camber and the toe also exist on the rear. The rear doesn't have a caster setting because it doesn't steer. Now let's go through each of these, and walk you through what the effects are. So firstly, caster. I have tried a number of caster settings on this car. I've tried five degrees, six degrees, and maximum, which is 7.1, 7.2. What I've found is that the biggest effect caster has on the way the car drives is it makes steering heavier. Another effect of higher caster is that as you steer and load up that suspension, you will gain extra camber, which will give you the benefits that I'll talk about in a second. Also, there is something to be said about the self-centering force when it comes to caster. What's happening is the more caster you have, as the steering wheel turns, your car is being jacked up by the suspension. Drifters love this. You don't have to whip the wheel around, you can just let go and it will do it. Now the problem with this is, you're not just turning the wheels, you're also lifting the whole front end of the car. And that is the weight that you feel when you turn the steering wheel. This is a cautionary tale for caster, because it's kind of like camber, and I have been wooed by the allure of having high caster. If you have loads of caster, the steering's gonna be really heavy, it will be a pig to drive at low speeds, and you lose some of that interaction. What about camber? At stock ride height, I've tried zero degrees camber, one degrees camber, and at this ride height, two degrees and 2.5 degrees. Camber's an interesting one because everyone and their dog talks about camber. I think it's because conceptually it's easy to understand, right? Wheels go in. The problem with camber I found is that it doesn't actually improve the way the car drives. If you're doing track days, the big benefit of camber, when you're turning really hard, as you are on track all the time, what you end up doing is this outside edge of your tire, you end up absolutely cooking it. So giving your wheel more camber will mean that you wear the tire evenly. For driving fast on the road, you're not experiencing those conditions. And what you really want is more feel. And the negative of camber that I found, the more camber you give your car, the more it will tramline and it will follow divots in the road and it doesn't drive nicely. You will also find a problem with camber, which is that the more you lower your car, the more camber the car gets naturally, and you can't undo it. If you see the amount of camber in my rear wheel, that is the minimum camber available at this ride height. Zero to two degrees camber range, you're probably gonna be very happy. If you go much higher than two, it's gonna start tramlining. But realistically, the difference on the road between zero degrees camber and two degrees camber 
you will never feel. Two degrees camber will give you like an extra 5% grip right at the limit. You're driving on the road. <laughs> it's kind of a moot point. It, it realistically is not gonna make much difference unless you're driving on track. Okay, what about tow? This is talking about the front. So I've actually tried every version of tow you can do on these cars. I've had quite a lot of tow in, 0.18. I've had an average amount of tow in, which is 0.07. I've had zero, and I've had quite a lot of tow out, which is 0.12. Towing your wheels in will slow down your steering response. So if you've got a car with a really twitchy steering, towing in will take some of that issue out. The opposite version of that is towing your wheels out will increase the speed of your steering. Now, this is an MX-5 with quite a short wheelbase. So I found toe in to be the best for the steering response. When I had toe out, it was incredibly twitchy. And even with quite a lot of toe in, it's still relatively twitchy, um, but it just calms that character down. The other big difference that you'll notice with toe is that it drastically affects the texture that you get in your steering. Now, this is really important if you've been watching my steering feel review series. If you like the idea of texture, tow your wheels the fuck in. <laughs> I found that basically, once you go to tow out, you lose texture. And the more you tow those wheels in, the more texture you get. The popular thing these days, especially with the front wheel drive guys, is to tow the wheels out. Right? You get really quick steering, it feels really cool, but you lose all your texture. Stop doing this. That's gonna get some comments, by the way, because there's a lot of people out there that tow, tow their wheels the fuck out. When I got this car, I did the same thing because everything online tells you, oh yeah, tow out's really good, tow out feels really good. Once you've aligned a car 12 times like I've done with this thing, you start to learn the differences and appreciate them, and I promise you, towing seems boring, but feels really good. Okay, so moving around onto the rear, you can also set the tow on the rear. So now if your rear wheels are pointed in or pointed out, the car will drive very differently. If anyone knows about alignments, it's a big no-no to have tow out on the rear. But I've done it. <laughs> I had 0.1 degrees of tow out on the rear. I've done zero and I've done 0 0.12 tow in. Don't tow out your rear wheels. You don't feel this setting in the steering, but you feel it in the chassis more than almost any of these. You will really feel that rear tow and the way it presents itself, it will feel like the rear of the car is almost swaying and always wants to oversteer. 30 miles an hour around a roundabout, half throttle, and you were going sideways. Um, <laughs> it's a terrible idea, don't do it. Zero toe on the rear is a bit better, but it's still a bit sketchy. And then toe in just makes the car drive normally. So you can experiment with how much toe in this is one thing that I haven't done. I'd love to try like 0 0.07, 0 0.12, 0 0.18. Camber on the rear. The camber on the rear is very similar to the front. It doesn't really affect the way the car drives. It just gives you a little bit more ultimate grip and it can cause tram lining if you have too much. Now, one thing I'll note here, you can tune the balance of your car with the ratio between your front and rear camber. So if you find that your car understeers a lot, you can keep your rear camber the same, give your front a little bit more and it might solve the understeering issue. If you find that your rear is always oversteering in corners, then increase your rear camber a little bit and it will resolve the issue. So these camber settings are really good, not necessarily for what everybody does, which is just max the camber and then tram line everywhere. <laughs> what they're really good for is tuning the balance of your car. I hope that was useful. At least now when you go to an alignment shop, you'll have a rough idea of what the fuck that paper means. YouTube really thinks you're gonna like this video, but if you enjoyed this yapping, you might really like this one too. My name's Mick. I drive cars. Peace.